Welcome everybody to another edition of Token Topics. We're going to recap some highlights at the recent Ripple Swell event in Dubai. Also, we're going to clarify some fake news over an XRP ETF. And we're going to look into the XRP Ledger's new accelerator program, which is sure to help the ecosystem grow. Also, we're going to hear words from Brad Garlinghouse. And we're going to look into some accessories of the Decent Wallet. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, everybody, before I begin, I'd like to briefly go over some accessories by Descent Wallet that could help your user experience. I'm gonna briefly go over the Biometric Wallet leather case, which I personally love, and a two-in-one OTG cable for Android users. These accessories might be great gift ideas or just to make a Descent user's life a little more comfortable. This is the genuine leather case. This is high quality leather for your biometric wallet device. It not only keeps it clean, but it protects it of course. And what I like to do is I like to travel with it. For example, I have the majority of my assets on my main device at home, but if I'm traveling, I still want that added security, but I like to keep some assets on me, not a whole lot. Well, this is perfect for that. It's perfect for traveling. So you keep your device protected, but you still have it accessibly on hand. Now, these leather cases make a great gift idea if you know somebody who already has a decent wallet or if you're just wanting to get yourself a little something. Now, I've had mine for some time and I could not imagine having my device without it. The feel, it gives it a much better feel. It gives it a much better look. And as I stated, it keeps it clean, which is very important, and it keeps it protected. If you want to know more about it, I'll put the link to the case in the description. Another awesome accessory you might not know about from Descent is the two-in-one OTG cable. Normally when you purchase a Descent biometric wallet, the thumbprint wallet, it comes with a factory OTG cable. But with this two-in-one cable, you're able to do firmware updates directly from your Android phone, whereas the factory cable, you have to do it from your PC. So it's another accessory. If you know somebody who has an Android device that they have a Descent wallet, this could be a perfect gift idea or something for yourself. This is exciting right here. The XRP Ledger Accelerator program is back for another round. This is very important. Cohort 2 introduces 11 new projects building, scaling, and innovating on the XRP Ledger. Let's learn more about this. XRP Ledger Accelerator program a dedicated, is dedicated to nurturing innovation and development on the XRP Ledger. It's back with the second cohort of groundbreaking projects after the success of the inaugural cohort, the Accelerator continues to support entrepreneurs and builders looking to scale their projects on the XRP Ledger. The XRP Ledger Accelerator is tailored toward helping entrepreneurs build on the XRP Ledger, scale, and succeed as part of the innovative selected teams receive $50,000 program grant, gain valuable insights from industry-leading mentors, refine their product market fit, and enjoy the opportunity to connect with investors and potential partners. These, this is extremely important because without people building on it and knowing about the XRP Ledger, it's not gonna go anywhere. So following a rigorous uh, selection process, 11 exciting projects were chosen to participate in a 12-week program dedicated to supporting and empowering builders on the XRP Ledger. The teams will now go on to enjoy a demo day in Singapore on November 14th, where they will exhibit a uh, important progress that they have made to date. They will also be invited to extend their stay for the Singapore FinTech Festival taking place November 15th through the 17th. Fake, fake. To clear up some fake news, bogus BlackRock XRP filing spoofs ETF watchers and crypto traders. But I want to stop right there. That is not to say that something is, is not going to happen in the future continues that the fake filing sent XRP higher by more than 10% before the token gave back its gains. BlackRock is not attempting to launch an XRP exchange traded fund ETF, the asset manager said Monday. A regulatory filing suggests that the company had taken first step towards doing so is fake. A spokesperson said shortly after the news began circulating on social media, XRP's price jumped more than 10% at one point, but had already begun sinking back to its pre-news intraday price of around 65 cents. BlackRock has previously filed with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission to launch spot Bitcoin and other ETFs prior to those SEC filings were 
filings for a Delaware entity, which acts as a corporate vehicle for the product paperwork submitted Monday, uh, mimicked those forms, but was not in fact filed by the asset management giant. Now I want to stop right there. I just want to say that I believe it's coming. It's only a matter of time. I think they're going to wait until all this stuff is cleared and there's like not even a trace of any kind of legal stuff. But once that happens, it's coming. Continues here that this is not the first time Delaware's corporate registration process has been abused, seemingly an attempt to pump crypto prices. So there could have been some foul play. A pair of filings in 2021 suggested that Grayscale, an asset manager, would launch the trust vehicles for two tokens that Grayscale did not have plans for. Grayscale is a subsidiary of Coindesk, a parent company Digital Currency Group. Speculators took on uh, Monday afternoon as ETF watchers, including Bloomberg's Eric uh, amplified the phony filings, presenting it as true. Media corporations, including Bankless and The Block, also recirculated the news, fueling by pressure on XRP. <clears throat> so that just shows goes to show that <clears throat> even if you're a major news outlet company, accidents do happen. All right, as we recap the Swell event, the first day Monica Long kicked it off. Let's go ahead and hear what she had to say, the president of Ripple. We first established our presence here as a company in 2020, recognizing that here in Dubai is a place where the blockchain industry was really blossoming and further supported very critically by regulators in the UAE. So we can thank DFSA and VARA for setting some clear rules and regulations for an industry and innovation to take place. Next up, we have a very informative discussion. Industry leaders from Zodia Custody, Standard Charter Bank, HSBC, and Medico as they discuss strategic objectives, institutional use cases, and optimizing efficiency in a tokenized economy. Collaboration is always much more successful, providing we have a set understanding of what the rules of the game are. And that really comes down to the regulatory aspect that we have that ensures that at the end of the day, the owner of the asset can sleep at night in the knowledge that they know what they own and they have legal title to it. It's being kept in a secure way. Let's highlight day two at the event. We have Henson Orser, the CEO of Vera, sharing insights on regulatory opportunities, challenges and a journey to make UAE a global hub for innovation and financial technology. How do you think about the speculative nature of the technology? I actually think that the technology is playing out. It's something that we have to embrace and figure out a way how we can make sure there's regulatory capture for investor protections. Crypto Decrypted host from MSNBC had the pleasure of interviewing Brad Garlinghouse at the Swell event. Let's hear the different topics and the different things that they discussed. Ripple has wrapped up its flagship Swell conference here in Dubai. I spoke with Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse on stage at the event. I asked about Ripple's battle with the Securities and Exchange Commission over the status of its XRP token and what Ripple's recent court win means for the scope of SEC power over the crypto space. Listen in. Ripple has had three consecutive victories over the SEC on this. First, the judgment on July 13th saying very clearly XRP is not in and of itself a security. Uh, second, the denial by the court for their, their request for an interlocutory appeal. And third, the uh, dismissal with prejudice, the charge, the allegations against Chris Larson and myself. So, uh, you know, look, one of the things that people talk about is one of the definitions of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and thinking you'll get a different outcome. The SEC is doing the same thing over and over again, and they think, I guess, they're going to get a different outcome. At some point, and you and I talked also backstage about a, a grayscale, also had, a, a, I think, an important victory in the United States about the Bitcoin ETF where the, the judge, again, this is a federal judge talking about a federal agency in the SEC saying, quote, the SEC is being arbitrary and capricious. You know, generally, judges tend to be pretty, you know, down the middle and try to you know, not be uh, dramatic. Like, those are damning words. So I, I think at some point, the SEC has to step back and realize that their approach of regulation through enforcement, let's just bring lawsuits, 
that, that has to break. So walk me through the next steps in this case. Today was the deadline for the briefing schedule for remedies. The SEC wants something like $770 million in disgorgement. Yeah. What happens next? Well, I, I, I uh, in a session that I did in Washington yesterday, I made the joke around, I, I'd like to see the Vegas odds on, you know, what, what could be the, what's called the remedies from the, the case. Look, it, it, I think we, the SEC, in my opinion, has lost sight of their mission to protect investors. And the, the question is, who are they protecting in this journey? And it, it turns out that the court will make, the judge will make a decision about remedies. We actually welcome that. Uh, I think that in this case, you look at what, in, what investors were harmed, and you also have to look at the securities laws and understand are there exemptions for institutional and you know, accredited investors and things like that. But look, I, I think it is a positive step for the industry, not just for Ripple, not just for Chris and Brad, but for the whole industry that the SEC has been put in check in the United States. And I'm hopeful this will be kind of uh, a, a thawing of the, the permafrost in the United States for you know, really seeing an amazing industry that has immense potential thrive in the largest economy in the world. We also spoke about the collapse of FTX and the recent ruling against founder Sam Bankman-Fried. He now faces up to 110 years in prison after being found guilty on all counts in his fraud trial. Here's how Gullinghouse described the impact for the sector. I said to my friends, I thought that he was going to end up going to jail. Uh, and, you know, what? I didn't follow the case super closely. It's clear the laws were broken. I don't know what his, in his mind or his intent. Uh, you know, I, I knew him. Uh, I know him a little bit. Uh, I, I mean, I, there's definitely things that happened there that you're like, I mean, it, it, it would, it's just in, hard to, for me to calculate how those things happened. I mean, I think about how Ripple is run and as a professional organization, like, it could never happen. Uh, you know, from our compliance team, from our chief legal officer, chief legal officer, the whole team, like it could never happen. So I, I don't know. There's a lot of lack of controls there. And I think it's certainly sad and bad for crypto. Uh, but again, I think in the in the long journey that has been crypto, it's, you know, one another speed bump that uh, has built resilience and I think hopefully made the industry smarter. And with Bitcoin and XRP both showing upward price momentum in November, I also asked, what's next for the market? Yeah, I'm going to dodge that question as best I can. Uh, <laughs> look, I, I, I really, I don't know how to think about these things in the short term prediction. I, you know, if you look at previous patterns, people have talked about October. Uh, certainly, you know, November has generally been a good month, but, you know, going into the Bitcoin having people talk about certainly an ETF getting approved could create a lot of capital flowing into the market. Uh, I, I don't know how to balance those things against other macro factors. I go back to kind of first principles around big picture. What do we need for this industry to thrive? We need regulatory clarity. We need lots of utility. We need to be solving problems at scale, not experiments, not possibilities. But look, I look at the excitement. Have you heard some of that on this stage in the past two days around tokenization? I look at, uh, I just think if you zoom out and look at what are the next five or 10 years look like for this industry, I'm extremely optimistic. And I think uh, people will be surprised. You know, there's a, there's a Silicon Valley expression that people often overestimate what's going to happen in five years but underestimate what happens in 10. There are, you know, kind of macro exponential forces that I think really uh, will continue to catapult this industry. Normally, when you purchase a decent biometric wallet through a Token Topics affiliate link, you get $30 off the retail price, which is an incredible deal in itself. But now during this special event, you're gonna receive $20 cash back in XRP as long as you fill out your information. That is $50 that's money back in your pocket if you look at it that way. But it gets even better than that. Just recently, Decent Wallet, they announced an Algo giveaway, an Algorand giveaway. And I was able to, to speak to the director of Decent and you can participate in all these events, which is a special time before the holidays and Christmas time. This is a great time to take 
this opportunity to take advantage of it. Descent is celebrating the integration of Algorand by giving away free algo. That's right. So not only can you receive a token topics discount if you purchase it through my affiliate link, you get $30 off. But you're also enabled to receive free Algorand as long as you fill out your form. It's very simple. The form is in the description along with the purchasing links. So the event just started. So between now and November 16th, if you purchase a wallet, as long as you fill out your form, you can receive that free Algorand. 